Hi, this is the first part of the Polar Wall training um, module. It's to do with the formwork assembly and it's identifying uh, the components within the Polar Wall system. Uh, we'll start off by just looking at a little bit of formwork as it's assembled. And here we can see uh, the, the extruded polystyrene boards that we use. These are 2.5 meters long, uh, 300 millimeters high. Um, different thicknesses, whichever, whatever thickness we want to require a particular U-value. And these are held in place by these H-rails. H-rails and the intermediate courses, top of the wall and the bottom of the wall, we're often using a U-shaped rail. And the rails are connected together uh, by different lengths of uh, these um, um, polycarbonate cross ties you see here. So that's basically what the wall looks like inside. And uh, here we can see the, the, the bit of close closer look here at a polycarbonate tie. We have different sizes. Uh, we, we have the 150 mil, six inch tie, primarily used in uh, above ground construction. Um, the eight inch tie, which is 200 millimeters wide, uh, gives a thicker wall, obviously. Uh, the wall for that is for swimming pools, uh, for basements occasionally, sometimes above ground. Uh, and quite often used in terraced houses or in apartments for um, separating walls where the thickness of the concrete uh, gives us the, um, the the acoustic requirement that, uh, that the, the building regulations need. And then we have these wider walls here, the 250 and the 300. These are used primarily for uh, basements and retaining walls. So from there we'll go and have a look at the uh, the block. Oh, before I go, I, uh, there's one thing I forgot there. Uh, just to point out the, 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 the part here. This is um, um, a water bar. We've got one at each end. Uh, the water bar is there to stop any moisture from traveling along the wall. Uh, let's have a look at the boards. We can put virtually any thickness of boards in there, but these are four, one, four boards that we commonly use. Um, the, the standard board is a 50 mil board. 50 mil to each side gives a U value in the wall of 0.27. Uh, now we can make the boards thicker by putting this groove in there and the, the H rail fits within the groove. And we can put virtually any thickness to both inside and outside. But if we put the 75 mil to the outside and we had a 50 mil board to the inside, we refer to that as an X25 wall, extra 25 millimeter of thickness basically over the standard. So it's a 75 mil board. We'd have a U value of 0.22. And here we can see as we thicken the wall that the uh, the, the U value goes down. It, it starts to slow down as the board gets thicker. Uh, the, the effectiveness of the insulation starts to flatten out. And uh, it, there is a, to a, to a degree, that it is getting sort of exponentially more expensive. So there, there is a sort of a, a line somewhere, I think, where you've got to say, to draw the line and say, that's as thick as we want to go, around about 100, 120, uh, because of course we can always thicken up the inside as well. We can get down to passive house levels, wherever somebody particularly wants to be um, for the um, for, for the thermal performance of, the, of, the, of their particular building. So boards are 2.5 meters long, 300 millimeters high, and virtually any thickness that you want in there. If we can have a look at it now, we can see some of the different boards because the material that we're using is extruded polystyrene not the expanded polystyrene gives much more strength involved here there's the 50 mil to each side and here's the different thicknesses and as mentioned before we can put a thicker one here on the inside so we can do, do whatever is required now once we got past the boards the next parts to look at are the rigid plastics and uh, we have two types of corner we have an external corner as shown here with this plain face we also have an internal corner, the difference being that the internal corner has this arrowhead here over which the, the tie snaps to lock the corner together. Uh, once we've got the, um, th those are the intermediate H corners, we also have a U corner which is used usually at the bottom to set out. It's the first thing that we use when, we, when, we're, when we're setting out the wall and at the top to cap it off. Now here we see the, the, the rails, we have H rails and U rails. And here we see it as it is assembled in its ladder. And it has a narrow head to the inside here of which the, uh, the cross tie snaps. These are 1.5 meters long. And it's made in a ladder like this because what, what it basically does by doing it like this, it means that this is, is very straight. And it has this wheeler effect to look as you find in traditional form work, which keeps our walls very straight. It gives a high degree of lateral stability uh, is what we should say. These are set at 225 mil centers. And we always build it in this ladder so that the end of this rail is opposite the end of the rail there. 
um, and and there's a specific reason for that, and it, 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 it's something that builders often want to uh, change slightly. They like to see it sort of coarse, so that one rail on this side is fastened to two rails on the other. Uh, but it, it's not a good idea. It's much better to build it like this. We get a better wall, better effect, uh, straightness wise. And so there's the, uh, the the ladder, the H ladder. We also have the U ladder as well. Same centers. And how we put it into the ladders is by using uh, a machine that we call the snapper. And uh, this is the snapper in action here. So you can see it being put together. You see there's an end stop there that's at the far end up here. Stops it from uh, going out, sets it perfectly in line. And the, the, the there are bolts fastened onto these guide rails here which give us the exact position to put these in so we get them at the right centers of 225 millimeters. Once they're all in, quick pull on the top, that's the ladder done. Okay, let's move on then. So here we see a, a bit of a close-up of the, the rail. Here's the rail here, with the little barbs in that uh, grab it. And ba basically th that's the, um, the, the main components of the uh, uh, of, of the polar, polar wall formwork and uh, how, how they go together.